a raid by the FBI at the home of Trump's former campaign chairman, Paul Manafort. Now, the Washington Post has some additional reporting this morning. It says this took place in the early morning hours, late last month, about two weeks ago. This is one day, as our Jessica Snyder reported, right after Manafort met with that staff for the Senate Intelligence Committee and apparently voluntarily produced some documents to them. The Washington Post says that it was FBI agents working, specifically working with, of course, a special counsel on the Russia investigation, Robert Mueller, that, that carried out, that executed this raid, and that they left with documents. Exactly. Investigators are looking at records tied to Manafort's activities in Ukraine, Cyprus, and other parts of the world. The raid took place just days after the Wall Street Journal reported that special counsel Robert Mueller is also probing whether Manafort engaged in possible money laundering. And of course, also the timeline is interesting here. This raid, according to the Washington Post, happened on July 26th. This was right as those congressional probes and the hearings were ramping up. What we do know is that the day of this raid, uh, at the end of July, the president was tweeting uh, his attacks on Attorney General Jeff Sessions and specifically pointed out that he thought Sessions should have gotten rid of the acting uh, FBI director, uh, McCabe, because of his uh, family's connection uh, to the Clinton campaign. This kind of pre-dawn raid, a search and seizure without any advance notice, is typical of the most serious criminal investigations, especially dealing with a target or a witness who is uncooperative, or untrusted. The Washington Post, which first reported the story this morning, says the warrant was wide-ranging and that it also indicates investigators may have argued to a federal judge that they had reason to believe Manafort could not be trusted to turn over all the records in response to a grand jury subpoena. An FBI agent or team of agents went to a federal judge and persuaded the federal judge there is probable cause of crime in the place to be searched, his home, or the okay. things to be seized, computer data and, and documents. Phone, and we don't whatever. trust him to give them to us, and we don't trust him to preserve them, or his own lawyer is telling us he can't control his client. Well, the mere fact that they're using a search warrant instead of a subpoena suggests to me that they don't trust Paul Manafort to voluntarily pr produce the things that they're asking for. And the pre-dawn reporting is very significant. Typically, a search warrant is to be executed during daylight hours, uh, typically between the hours of 6 a.m. and 11 p.m. to respect the privacy interests of the person whose home is being searched. You typically need to get special permission to go at hours outside of, of that window. And so it would suggest to me that Mueller and his team requested and demonstrated to this judge that there was a reason they needed to go before dawn, uh, that perhaps they didn't trust Manafort uh, to uh, uh, can still have the documents. Maybe they were concerned that he was going to destroy the documents. The use of a warrant in this case means that a judge would have determined there was probable cause to believe that a crime had been committed. This raid shows there's clear evidence of some criminal wrongdoing and that Manafort is connected to it. It is notable that you can't just execute a search. You need to get a search warrant. And in order to get a search warrant from a judge, you have to show probable cause that a crime was committed. A search like this requires a warrant. That means that the FBI had to go to a neutral, detached magistrate, a judge, and describe with particularity what he wanted to search and what he might find there and connect them, create a nexus to a crime. Now, FBI agents are very, very good at describing these items and getting search warrants, but at their core, they have to convince a judge, ex parte, that means with no other side there, uh, that there is probable cause, more likely than not, that a crime has been committed and that the things that will be found there will relate to that crime. Mm. Well, the most significant thing about this, I think, is that to get a search warrant, you have to show probable cause. It is a much higher standard than is necessary to issue a grand jury subpoena, which can be done as long as there's any likelihood that you would find relevant evidence. Probable cause, and you have to articulate what that crime is, and you have to submit a detailed affidavit signed by an agent detailing all of the facts 
that show that there is probable cause to believe a crime is committed. A judge has to agree with that and issue the warrant. You have to specify the items that you're going to look for, and you also have to demonstrate the reason you believe that those items are to be found in the premises to be searched. I have issued so many search warrants. When they come to you for a search, war a search warrant, they have to tell you they can't get this by any other means, and it is likely to be destroyed or removed, and we need this awesome power, literally breaking down a door guns. of a white-collar person <laughs> right. with yeah, guns at 5.30 in the morning. Yeah. We need this awesome power, and we need it now. That tells me there is a there there. The well, certainly, you want to uh, look and see if there are any uh, <clears throat> uh, co-conspirators in a case that you can flip, is the term. Uh, you know, get leverage by showing that you can charge them with a crime and in exchange for leniency, getting them to cooperate against maybe a bigger fish, uh, so to speak. In this case, perhaps uh, one of the Trump family members, the Trump organization or President Trump himself. I would be looking to uh, potential plea agreements involving Manafort or Michael Flynn. They seem to be the most vulnerable right now. And as much as the judge had to be convinced that there's probable cause, Bob Mueller had to be convinced as well. He is a very cautious and deliberate prosecutor who knew Phil well what the impact would be when this raid would come to light, as it would inevitably at some point. And that, I think, is a very important factor here. One thing I want to say real quickly on the Bob Mueller stuff, I think that Bob Mueller is a professional, and regardless of whether the president is praising him uh, privately through an attorney or whether yeah. he's berating him publicly through Twitter, job. he's going to do his job oh, the facts follow them or they He's going to do his job and he's yeah. going to justify his job. Mm -hmm. But these two things are connected. The realization by Donald Trump that it would be better for him to cooperate than, than condemn the special counsel and a pre-dawn FBI raid on the home of someone represented by competent counsel. To lawyers, it's very telling. That is very damning for Manafort and for the president. It comes at the same time that the president is starting. I better take this more seriously. Earlier today, when that news alert went out from the Washington Post about Manafort's house being raided, apartment being raided, rather, it's had a chilling effect on a lot of sources in Trump world. They realize that this investigation is real and it's serious and it's potentially uh, criminal, dealing with criminal activity here uh, for the FBI to, to conduct such a dramatic raid on the Manafort apartment. I really loved my weekend. I called it my weekend in Moscow. But I was with the top-level people, both oligarchs and generals and top-of-the-government people. I can't go further than that, but I will tell you that I met the top people, and the relationship was extraordinary. So to be clear, Mr. Trump has no financial relationships with any Russian oligarchs. That's what he said. I, I, that's what I said. That's obviously what the, the, our position is.